guys, welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Senatus. Senatus is a Romanic style oh, Senate game in which you're going to try and put your influence in Rome by uh, providing influence to maybe the evil uh, Skeltariatus, <laughs> you say that name, Artifix, the Plebs, the Colosseum area, as well as you're going to be uh, trying to gain favor amongst the different senators. You're basically going to be a faction trying to rule over the area with an iron fist against other factions as well. You're going to try and pass laws, or you're going to try and uh, unsuccessfully pass laws to prevent certain things from happening throughout the game. On your turn, you have a different amount of actions you can take, uh, or sorry, different amount of actions that there are to take, and you can choose one of them, along with either card in your hand that you're going to get from placing influence on the board. Now your objective is to have the most influence on the board in each of these specific areas to gain points, and those points can range from positive or negative depending on how uh, the interaction of the game goes. But the overall idea is to get the best locations with the most influence on them during each of the three different end phases of the game. Also controlling senate seats is very important because you're going to gain a lot of points as you do so, and using influence on senators to try and uh, make your bidding go well. Now you only have a certain amount of influence in the game so as you continually to pour influence out you're going to slowly realize that you don't have any more influence to spend and you have to take influence away from other people and put it on other people as well the end of the game needless to say the player with the most points is going to be the winner all right let's go down and look at everything included in the game senatus by gray mass games so here we have the game Senatus and everything that's going to be included. And as you can see, I went ahead and already set it up. Now what you're going to need to do when you get your copy is you're going to set up each of the different card stacks on the mat equal to uh, the different uh, symbols. So for instance, this one here is the Mer Mercator. I'm going to put that right on the same symbol. There's six different decks for each of the six different locations on the board here. There's three here and there's three here. After you do that, you're going to set down these cubes here on each of these spaces. These are going to basically be the influence value for each of the different areas, not including this one over here, which is the bad guys, the Skeletarius. Uh, these guys here are going to be worth eight points to the highest uh, influence here and minus five to the lowest person. And um, other than that, though, that's the basic point you're going to be scoring in the game, but there's a lot of other ways as well. This is the uh, pro procurator, the, basically the, the, the first player who also controls the order, who also controls these cards over here. And you're going to be uh, utilizing this space here that will allow you to not only be the first player, but also see how these things are going to go. Uh, these are the voting tracks here, which is yes and no. You're always going to start with uh, them here with these little cubes based on whatever this one says here. That's just plus two, so two go there. Uh, over here on the board, you're going to have these senators here and then the senators for an additional player game, which is I think four, five, and six. You're going to have a senator deck, which you're going to place up here, as well as you're going to have the victory conditions and uh, these cards here, which are nasty. They're bad. They're bad things that happen to you. Uh, these here are going to be like the laws as well as the influence the things that happen on the board here if, if this passes then these things are going to operate the board over here and things are going to occur based on what the order chooses this track here is going to be your corruption track because as we know as you're uh, going through politics you're going to go through uh, a little bit of corruption here and there and the players that get the most corruption are going to get the most negative points at the end of each of the specific rounds speaking of rounds over here is the round tracker and as you go through turns, which are each of these uh, areas here. Whenever you hit these little circles here, there's going to be basically the scoring phases of the game. There is three of them at the end of the last scoring phase. You're going to determine the victor of the game. Um, over here are some additional uh, little goodies here that can be included in the Kickstarter, as well as, of course, some of the player aids, which are these guys here, uh, as well as the round uh, recess and whatnot. And it has a nice little bunch of uh, different character aids or player aids. These are your influence. You're going to start with this whole thing here. And uh, you're also going to have these little guys here, which are going to basically give you bonus turns if you get them. To start the game off, you can choose a number of players in the game. Each player is going to get three of these objective cards, and they're going to go ahead and choose one of them for free. And if you want another one, you can take another one, but it's going to cost you three corruption. After that, you're going to get rid of the other one. And if you did choose to take two, you're going to go ahead and put uh, your corruption, you know, one of your influence on this cor corruption meter here. And as you go across these little areas here, you're going to actually lose 
lose influence and burn them into this area here. Um, after you do that, then each player is going to have five influence to start, and you're going to get to place them in turn order um, around the board here. Now you can choose to place them either here, which will let you be the order. You can choose to place them in any of these three spaces here, as well as any of these three spaces here. But not only that, you can also choose to put them on these senators here. But you only get five of them, so you have to make your choices and make them wise. So the first thing you do is I maybe I'd place the first senator, somebody else would go, and they would go around the table, then be my turn. Maybe I want to be the order. Uh, maybe I want the Colosseum or the plebs. Uh, maybe I want the artifacts. Uh, maybe I want another senator, and then uh, that would be all five of mine. Uh, the person who has the most in this order area here is going to get the order token and going to start the game off first, and then it's going to go around in rounds, which I will explain later. Then you know the basic setup of the game as well as the uh, putting the stuff on the board. All right, so let's come up and I'll talk about what you can do on your turn in order to progress the round tracker here to the uh, point in which you're going to be scoring. So I explained the starting phases of the game, which you're going to be placing that influence for your first five, as well as getting your objective cards, and also how to put everything down on the mat so you can begin. But now it comes down to the order is going to start, and it's going to go around in a clockwise fashion, and after everybody's taken their turn, the round will move up until which phase you hit the score, which point you hit the scoring phase. Now what can you do? Now there's actions here. The first action you can choose to do is you can choose to contact uh, a faction, in which you're going to place one or two influence, from your little bins onto those areas. And of course, there are six different locations you could do that on. Purple, yellow, orange, green, blue, and the gray evil faction. Um, after you do that, you can then take a card from each of the factions that you put an influence on, and those cards can be utilized by uh, using, it, uh, using an action. Now, the, you get one action per turn. However, if you have a support token, at the end of your first action, you can use a support token to take another action. The next thing you could choose to do instead of that is removing influence. Removing a one to two influence off of any of the locations on the board that are not the corruption tracker, and uh, that is going to actually let you place more influence down later and it's going to be something you're going to use later in the game. You can also discard cards from your hand to continue to take car tokens of influence off of the board. The third thing you can do is call in a favor which is basically to play a card. You have these cards here that you're going to get from playing influence down and uh, when you play them you have to do everything they say. On cards in the top left hand corner is going to be basically these little circles that are going to allow you to sacrifice them to do things like subterfuge as well as to gain senators. Uh, and you can choose to utilize those for, for that action if you would like, but in general when you're calling a favor, you're just playing a card. You're going to follow it up with the top right hand corner uh, from left to right, from top to bottom, and you're going to do what it says. Now there's three mandatory actions that must take place, and there's three optionals. The first mandatory is you have to reveal and resolve the will of the Senate cards, which are these little nasty bad cards that have a, uh, a fist on them. These are things that normally would affect you in a negative way. Another thing that could happen is an immediate voting round takes place, and it's a little check mark. Voting is basically going to be, uh, look at the voting meter, is there more yeses than noes. If there is, the vote takes place, everything goes through, and then of course you flip over new ones so that the orator will be able to utilize that at the end of the round and uh, continue the game. Uh, the next thing you, could have, you have to do is gain or lose corruption, and that has a little broken, cracked symbol on it. Uh, corruption is things that you don't want to have. Obviously, a corruption is something you don't want to have, so you gotta be careful how much you, corruption you gain. Uh, the optional ones are you could choose to place down influence in the order area, so you could be the order for the next round. You could choose to uh, place your tokens down in the voting areas of uh, upvote or downvote based on the number of senators you have influence over. And then the last one is you can place a senator, uh, an influence in a senator's empty seat. Or if all of the senators are filled up, then you can choose to remove influence from somebody else, which could remain in having a senator with no influence. Uh, the next thing you can choose to do is control a senator. Now, like I said before, there's a lot of senator cards. The top left-hand corner of these cards is going to have a uh, circle or circles, and you're going to be able to spend... Uh, from your cards in your hand, some of them have circles, some of them don't. Those are basically the costs, and uh, this is basically your, your resources, and those are the costs on the card. And you can go ahead and spend those cards to gain the senator, which has specific effects that you're going to take and do, whether they be positive or negative. Finally, set settling up with basically getting one of these little tokens here, which will give you a, it's a support token, which will give you an extra action that you can take one after every turn. Uh, the next thing you can do is a subterfuge action, which is basically the same thing as gathering a senator, but instead uh, there are six, uh, five or six of them, which will allow you to do certain things. It actually is listed down below. So stuff like uh, moving uh, the corruption up and down 
down, gaining influence, gaining support tokens, adjusting affections, track, lowering your corruption value and bribery. Oh, sorry. And uh, no, there's five. Okay, those are the five. I said them. <laughs> and so those are the main actions you can do, of course. Now, after you've done your action and then chosen to take a support token uh, away from yourself and done another action if you would like or if you have the ability to, it passes turn and everybody gets a turn till the round is over. Then you move the round tracker up. In the first phase, there is five turns, I believe, or there's six turns. In the next, there is going to be five. And then the final and last one is going to be four. After each of these phases, you're going to encounter one of these, like, basically scoring phases and when you're gonna you're gonna have the order fulfill his tasks you're gonna score based on the influence trackers and uh, you're gonna be taking certain influence off of the board as well as scoring for how many senators you have there's a couple other things i believe as well but that's the basic idea after you go through all of them so let's go down below i'll show you how the turns work and the actions pretty quickly and then we'll come back up and i'll tell you a thing about the game so now we're back to the game senators and i went ahead and set it up for three players and i also went ahead and gave them all of their objective cards and they chose whether or not they're going to keep one or two in this case, Red kept two, so he's up on the track already for corruption. And then they've all placed in turn order uh, these influence, and there's five for each player. Yellow has two over here in the Senators, then you have Red and Purple with one. Uh, red is going to be the Orator, because he has the most in this area here. And then each of the players have some in the Plebs over here. The Artifacts is the Red, and the Orange are fighting for that. Uh, the Purple is going to be here over here for the uh, Skeletarius, the, the bad guys here. The Scholars is Purple, and then another one here is Augur which is purple, and then another fighting here between uh, uh, red and orange with the Mercator. Okay, so now that's all set up. The little, the for, I guess the token here for the uh, for the uh, orator is going to go to player that is red, and he's going to start the game off. He's got all of his little influence to use in the first round of the game, or first uh, couple rounds of the game. It's going to be pretty easy to use influence. So like I said before, there's a lot of different actions you can take take place. For instance, one action is pretty simple. Maybe you can go ahead and place two of these guys down, and then after you place your influence down, he's put it on blue and he's put it on the yellow. He will gain the cards, uh, or sorry, purple, or orange, orange. So he gains one of these cards here, and then he gains one of these guys here. And he looks at the cards. These are things he'll be able to use later. Uh, so he's going to go ahead and save those. The next player is going to get to go, and we'll just go ahead and say that it is orange, because why not? Orange maybe wants to do the same thing. So in which case, he would go ahead and put one on here maybe. Mm, and one on here. And then he's going to get a green and he's going to get a gray cards that he can go ahead and utilize. Put it over there. And finally, purple. Now, purple, uh, like I said, there's different actions you can do, uh, such as removing influence as well. He could, if he wanted to, take two off of here, but he, he, he wouldn't want to do that because he actually has a control for this one. But let's say maybe he didn't like these areas here because he thought he was going to lose control. He could go ahead and take these off, as well as he could choose to take away cards, if he had any in his hand, uh, to continue to take more off the board. And that might be very useful. Another action he could do is maybe calling in a favor by playing a card, but he doesn't have any, so we'll wait till later. So right now, I think we'll just go ahead and play some more of these guys. It's probably what you're going to do to start the game off. He'll put two over here on the Skeletarius, and uh, bam, there we go. So now it is back to player that is red. This goes up one notch. So that was the first round, and then we won the second round. And uh, he has got these cards now he can utilize. This one here shows that he can actually take part in the vote. He can then gain a support token, and it'll cost him zero corruption. And this one here is uh, he can support do the vote, gain three support tokens, and take two corruption. He'll actually probably do this one. So he's going to play this card as his action. Uh, it's, it's blue, so we'll put it over here by the blue in the discard pile somewhere. Uh, he's going to go up two more corruption, so he's way up on the corruption track there. But he's also going to take part in the vote if he wants. So red here, he's got one. And uh, he also has, uh, let's see, he has the ability if he wants to place in here. Now that's going to be determined based on these guys here. So right now we see that the Statue of Apollo is the uh, Order. And that says the Order, which is going to be red currently, for, at least for this round, will choose to be able to move Argus up or down plus or minus five. And we're going to look and see what that is. So that would be uh, right here. And he could choose at the end of this round to go make this plus or minus five. Does he want this to pass? Well, obviously, as the uh, or as the orator, usually he's going to want this to pass. So he could choose to put an influence in there, and he probably will just in case. And tithings will also pass, which means at the end of the round, this will go down two. Uh, this will go up plus five. And uh, this will go up minus, or this will go down minus two. And that will be what that looks like. And then these will go away and new ones will come up. So Red kind of likes that idea and he knows what he's got in here. And these are different things he has. I mean, if he controls yellow and green, he'll gain 12 points at the end of the game. And uh, if he reveals the, this card at the end of the game, he uh, to gain three influence in the Merker faction. So this will actually be, give him a more, this is actually a good combo because he needs this one and this one, which are these two. And also at the end of the game, he could actually put three influence from his pool into here to guarantee he gets this one. 
which is pretty solid. So scoring that 12 points will be easier for him. But right now it's not as important as realizing that he needs yellow because that is going to gain a lot of points. It's plus five here and he can choose to make it go plus five here. But if he doesn't end up getting this area, he can actually make it go at least minus five. So it'll just stay, it'll go to zero and then go back here. If you notice here, there's also negative points you can gain at the end of a round. So um, pretty cool, right? And after he plays that card there, it's also gonna give him three support tokens. When he gains these three support tokens, he can use support tokens during his turn or save them for the end of the round here to gain points. Uh, using these tokens will allow him to gain actions. So he's three. So we'll just go ahead and save that for him and we'll move on to yellow. And yellow's got his cards as well. And we'll see what they do. Uh, he's got two blues here. That's pretty useful. And that says all other players gain five corruption and he gains three. And this is a wild card. That means he gets all these symbols up here, but it's going to cost him a corruption if he chooses to use it for picking up something like this around here. So let's go ahead and utilize that card. This card here, we'll discard this card and he could choose any of these because this costs a purple, this costs a yellow, and this is free. Uh, so maybe we'll go ahead and use this one here. It says select a player. That player plays two influence as votes on uh, the pending bill. So we'll go ahead and choose red here. And it says that player plays two influence as votes. So red will want more of this to pass. And uh, in the emperor's favor box. Okay, here we go. Uh, then you get to place three influence. So yellow is going to place three influence in one of the center spots, which is good. And finally, uh, you're gonna go down three corruption. If he had any, he would go down three corruption on this track, but he doesn't have any, no big deal. This gets burnt, he gets a support token. And uh, not only that, but we fill up the board with another senator. You're always gonna have at least three senators in the game available to be purchased or, or utilized, I should say. Uh, and the game's gonna continue and the rounds are gonna push through and eventually you're gonna come to this round here. Just before that happens though, Every single player is going to get a chance to take an extra turn at the cost of three corruption. And <laughs> finally, after everybody chooses to do that, the orator, or the first player, is going to get a chance to take an extra turn for six corruption. It's dangerous to do, but it's very useful because it will determine how the dynamic of the game works. When that happens, after that's finished, you're going to go ahead and take a look at this little influence tracker here, and it will, t or the, the recess rounds the tracker here, and it'll tell you what you need to do, and then in turn order what happens. First thing is the orator will take one final action for six corruption if he wants. In turn order, everybody was going to remove one of their influence from the board here. Uh, and then the order will resolve the vote here. So the order will say, okay, I want uh, this to go up plus five. Uh, the order then sticks a player. That player adjusts one faction by plus two or minus two. So he'll choose, maybe he'll choose, I don't know, purple. Purple wants purple to go up. So that he'll push that two up. And then this will go ahead and resolve. And this will go down two. This will go up plus five more. And this will go down minus two. Discarding this one here. We, those, these will be new ones for the next round. And then after that is done, uh, the order the order is resolved the vote. So these these are uh, going back to the order now. Then the determine the new order. Uh, basically down the influence here. So in this case, if this was how it looked, the order would be red once again. And the order is going to gain a support token. And if he was the order from the last round, which he was, he's going to gain points. Now there's going to be a point tracker in here. So everybody's going to have an influence in the point tracker area. And this is how you're going to score. So in this case, he would score his bonus points for being the order from the last round. And um, the order may adjust one faction track plus two or minus two. And in this case, he controls the space here. So maybe I'll push this up too. Um, Okay, so now the next thing is if playing the Emperor's Favor, Corruption, um, or the Roman Legion card. So if you have these guys here, you can go ahead and utilize them. They might give you bonus points. Some say the end of the game, some say during the rounds. And finally, um, if... Uh, then finally it says score the board any hidden agenda cards. Okay, so you'd score the board here. You'd look and say, okay, this player here, he's got the most. That's going to give him eight points. So purple will go up to eight. Uh, this player is the least on this area here. So he'll go down minus five points. So that's not too good for poor old yellow. Um, and I, I guess you would also give him his bonus points too beforehand. In this case here, red is going to go, you can't go back past zero, I'm guessing. Uh, this player here, red, is going to be scoring blue for five points. One, two, three, four, five. This player here, yellow, is going to be scoring, uh, let's see, green here, which is going to give him five points. So maybe he'll just cancel these out. Uh, then red's going to go ahead and score this area over here, which is going to net him another five points. Good job, red. One, two, three, four, five. And over here, we got two purples. And purple's going to basically score 15 and five, which is 20 points, putting him at 28 points. A big, solid lead there. Um, uh, draw one faction card from any faction you have influence in. So if you have influence in red and you're red, you can go ahead, or blue and you're red, you can go ahead and draw one of these cards here, and everybody else can do the same. Um, and then 
flush the current senators, replace with three new ones. So these guys are going to go. I'm gonna put three new ones out, just like this. Let's see if I can do it right. Boop and boop. All right. And then, a lot to this, right? Um, and, and then after that, you're going to reveal these new ones here. Uh, this one says a plus, uh, plus three to over here, so you'll add one more to the yes vote for this, and you have a trade embargo, and then you're gonna read it. The person who is the order is gonna start the game, and it's gonna continue going in rounds. And uh, moving, of course, along the track here, uh, all three of these, final, final one here is going to end the game, and you're gonna score just like you normally would. In addition, to any of the uh, of these guys here. And also at the end of every single round, you'll get an opportunity to get one of these guys here, which will score you, which will, which will cost you three corruption, but could gain you bonus points at the end of the game. Um, and that's the basic idea. Of course, there'll probably be a little bit of changes. Maybe I missed a few things here and there. There's a couple bonus uh, cards, maybe the Kickstarter exclusives and whatnot, that you can utilize in the game. But for the most part, that's how you play Senatus. All right, let's come up and I'll tell you what I think about in any caveats. So let's go ahead and start off with caveats. And the first one I can think of is these cards that you're going to be getting for uh, as you place your influence down. You can have as many of them as you're in your hand as you want, at least as far as I know currently. Rules might change. Uh, and you can go ahead and utilize any that you choose on your turn. Playing any of the actions once is all you can do unless you use a support token, then you'll get two actions. But also, during each of the rounds, another little caveat is support tokens will be worth points. And I believe it's like two three and five points or one three and five points as the rounds go on so not utilizing all your support support tokens and hoarding them at the end can score you some bonus points also at the end of the game if you have the most corruption for every uh, certain amount of spaces you're going to lose influence if you have the least you will not or sorry points for the most corruption you're not you're gonna lose points if you have the least you will not lose points and in the middle you lose a certain amount of points as well so staying away from putting too many corruption uh, putting too much corruption on the board is good and also whenever you go past a die symbol on the corruption track or, or plus or minus symbol you're going to be losing influence into the bin and you do not get that back in Senatus, as you play the game, you're going to have these order cards that have fists on them, and at the beginning, they're very nasty. However, at the end of the game, they can be nasty, and they can be kind of useful, because they get rid of influence on the board for you and let them put them back in your hand. And as an action, putting influence in your hand is pretty useful, especially at the end of the game. Not so at the beginning of the game, right? But if you can do that with a card along with a senator, it can help you. So utilizing certain combinations is good. And all of the cards in each of the stacks is going to have a benefit. Uh, there are certain forced votes, and there's one in each of these deck here, decks here, as well as there are uh, these fist cards, which will let you gain the fists as well. Um, and they can be beneficial to an extent, but mainly they're, they're kind of nasty. As an orator, it's very important to secure it, because you're going to be able to utilize the vote, and the vote is very powerful, especially the, the bill, I should say, because that can actually change the way in which you're going to be scoring at the end, and you'll have that opportunity as an orator to get that bonus extra, extra turn, which can, in some cases, lead you to winning the game at the cost of corruption. Now, you want to stay behind on the corruption meter to a certain extent, but gaining corruption can be at least non-painful via certain cards in the achievement or the, uh, uh, the, the, the achievement deck in which you're going to be able to hold on to until the end of the game. Some of them say if you have 25 corruption at the end of the game or more, you get to score points, so it might be beneficial to save on save those and it might be more lenient to you to be able to utilize the corruption this game is an area control game among other things but for the most part you're going to be utilizing the influence you have and it's weird because as it starts off you have a lot of influence and a lot of uh, a, and a, a lack of control and you're trying to spread your influence out as best as you possibly can to score the most points as the tracks on all of the different communities go up and down based on player decisions and based on the vote and so you always want to be changing the influence you have throughout the game because some places may have great influence the first round and they may be negative points the second round which can be potentially dangerous in fact if you have that space that has negative five points as well as the evil uh Seclaris, or whatever you want to call them they can be give you negative five points if you have the least amount of stuff in but they give you bonus points if you control the most amount of influence in them and they also will give you the most i guess attacking style cards all of the decks have their own unique feel to them as far as what they do and controlling the senate is important there's another separate aspect of the game where utilizing the senators is important do you want to have the most influence on all the senators because you're going to gain points based on the most that you have and i do really really like that okay that's a lot of caveats i know but uh nevertheless the game is beautiful 
It's also a Roman style game, which I really, really enjoy. It's one of my favorite style themes or genres in the board gaming world. And this one does it great justice. As I played the game, it probably plays about an hour and a half, roughly, with more players. It probably takes a little longer. I'd say about a half an hour a player, I guess, to be realistic. Um, but it didn't ever feel like the game was taking too long, even though it is a longer game. It has a huge amount of take that, so to speak, basically has a huge amount of like aggressive aggressive it's a, it's a very aggressive game is what i'm basically trying to say because you're not really taking that to the most for the most part but you can the idea though is players that are in first place may be picked on and players that are in last are generally going to be left alone to a certain extent and it's going to have this wave effect uh, on the players uh when you're playing three players it happens to be this two-on-one thing that goes on uh, i suggest more players for this game the more players the better if you like a longer strategic tactical game this one is definitely one for you if you like a little bit of area control as well as a little bit of like this 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 action-based choice that you're going to get and it might feel like you only have six or seven actions to choose from but really realistically you're going to have a boatload of cards in your hand and those are all going to be actions you can choose during your turn and that makes for interesting gameplay you're never going to play the same game twice especially if you play with more players and there's tons of stuff added to this game i am definitely excited to play this game again i'm pretty sure i'm going to play this live if you liked anything that sounded like on this uh, from, from this review here, I definitely suggest you take a look at it. Some players may find this a little too much, or may find this a little too complex, and in that case, maybe you want to stay away from it. If you do not like aggressive games, this is definitely an extremely aggressive game, and be aware of that. Feelings will be hurt, and when you play this game, at least one player will probably leave unhappy, <laughs> just because of how crazy it can get. But if everybody in your group likes that kind of playstyle, like diplomacy and whatnot, this is definitely a game to check out. I strongly recommend it. This is getting my seal of excellence. Do check it out in the description below on Kickstarter. Set it is. All right, guys. Thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. If you like this video, go and check out those other videos. If you on YouTube, like, subscribe, and comment. Like, subscribe, comment, please. It does help. We do greatly appreciate it, as well as checking out our website, unfilteredgamer.com. We've got tons of blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. We're giving away the game, all your base, last of last, the card game on there. And uh, we are also doing a couple other cool, interesting things, as well as our Kickstarter list. It has all the new Kickstarters up and available for you to take look at without having to search on the pesky site if you're interested in more giveaways check out our friends everythingboardgames.com and the giveaway geek they do tens of great giveaways even more than my own and blog posts for reviews all right guys that's all i got for this time and as always i look forward to controlling all of rome with you next time <laughs>